Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful Wednesday here in New Bedford, Massachusetts. You are here today with myself, Carrie. I'm the curator of education here, and I'm here with one of our amazing educators, Sam. We are in our animal ambassador space. So if you have visited the zoo before, you might have met Sam or Sarah or one of our amazing volunteers uh, with an animal ambassador. We are going back to the beginning of our virtual keeper chats today with the one that we did very first. So if you've been with us since March, um, you may remember who we featured for our first virtual keeper chat. Um, these are two of our newer animal ambassadors. They are our striped skunks. Um, so they are taking their time. So one thing to know is that as new ambassadors, this is only their third time in this space. So they're getting used to being outside, coming out, um, getting used to the space and all of the sights and sounds. So Sam's going to give them a little bit of food. Um, on the right there, you have Hamilton and on the left is his sister, Lavender. Um, and you'll see they're going to take some time to get used to, um, everything. So while they're doing that, I'm going to turn it over to Sam, who's going to tell you a little bit more about striped skunks and about these guys. Uh, as always, we can take some questions in the comments. So I'll turn it over to Sam. Awesome. Again, as Carrie said, um, these guys haven't been shown in a little bit. These were our first animals that we showed for our live keeper chats. Um, again, we have Hamilton, um, Lavender closest to me and Hamilton is closest to Carrie. Um, and these guys are three-year-old okay. striped skunks, um, and they uh, arrived to us from a, um, another facility, I believe in Philadelphia, where they just weren't able to care for them, and so they were transferred to us where they can continue to be great animal ambassadors. Now you may notice that um, Lavender over here looks a little different from Hamilton, He's, um, but that's okay. Um, so she's still a striped skunk. Skunks, um, can come in a lot of different variations, um, a lot of different colors and their stripes may change. Um, but again, they are still striped skunks. But in total, uh, there are about 13 different subspecies and all those different subspecies are going to look a little different from one another. Um, but we can find striped skunks all across the United States from east to west coasts um, into southern Canada and even parts of northern Mexico. Um, they typically prefer more open habitats, um, but you can find them in a little bit more wooded areas. Um, and they've actually become um, becoming more adapted to live in more urban and suburban environments. So these guys uh, can really hang out wherever there's, there's food. They're really hardy animals. We do have some people asking what they're eating. I don't know if you want to just quickly touch on that. Yeah, so right now they're just getting a mix of vegetables. Um, we have some omnivore biscuits and a little bit of dog food just for some protein. Um, Hamilton's is a little bit different. You can see his grain is a little bit smaller. Um, this is just so they get a nice uh, full diet. It gets through all their minerals and nutrients. Uh, in the wild, skunks are um, mostly insectivores, which means they mostly eat insects. Uh, so they're going to be eating a lot of beetles and grasshoppers, maybe some caterpillars and things like that. Uh, occasionally they will eat some meat, so they'll find some worms, they might eat some small reptiles, or if they can catch some mice and some voles, or they might eat some carrion, um, which is just dead things. Um, and occasionally, I believe in the winter months or when it's in season, um, they will start feeding on more fruits and vegetables as well. Um, so these guys will eat a lot of things, but again, as they're moving into our more urban and suburban environments, they will occasionally eat our trash. So make sure you bag it up and store it properly so our, uh, these guys don't become a nuisance in your area. Um, we had a question from Kaiden Age 9 about if this species can spray. Yes, they can spray. Um, so kind of near their butts, we've all seen, um, <laughs> uh, when we think of a skunk, we think of their really smelly spray. Um, but they don't want to spray that right away, so they're going to have some warning signs first. Um, so first, a skunk might stomp its feet on the ground to sort of scare off that predator, or it's going to sort of raise its tail and kind of scrunch up to make itself look a little bit bigger. Uh, occasionally, they might do a handstand, which is a little impressive. That's just showing that, hey, like, back off, I really mean business. 
Um, but if these guys feel really, really threatened or if they just get startled, they're gonna spray their stinky smell. Um, and their smell is super odorous because it has a base of sulfur. So if you've ever smelled sulfur, um, you know it's really, really smelly. Um, and, but these guys don't want to spray all that much. So within there, they have glands um, sort of near the base of their tail. <laughs> so Hamilton is being sort of lavender suit. Um, but they have those glands near the base of their tail. And within those glands, they have about a tablespoon of that liquid inside. Um, and they can spray about four or five times max, um, up to about 10 or 15 feet, which is pretty far. Uh, but after they spray that times, it takes about 10, uh, 10 or so days for them to actually refill uh, that, those glands. So once they've used it up, they're kind of defenseless. So they don't want to spray unless they have to. Would they eat a snake? I think they would eat a snake, um, probably a smaller snake if they were able to catch it. Um, but they're not, definitely not going to go after probably like a rattlesnake or anything bigger. Hamilton's showing off his teeth a little bit here. So people may be surprised to see they have pretty big teeth. Yeah, these guys have big teeth because again, they're going to be munching on um, those big hardy insects. You know, beetles have those hard exoskeletons, so you have to have pretty sharp teeth to break through it. Is uh, it true that tomato sauce can get rid of the smell if you get hit? I, from what I've seen, tomato sauce really isn't a good remedy. Um, I don't know where that wife's tail came from. Maybe it was just a widely available thing. I think you just sort of have to let it disappear on its own. I have seen you have to take maybe some baths in uh, diluted hydrogen peroxide and everything else, but um, that smell is just going to stick on you for probably about a week or two. So that's why you want to avoid skunks as much as you can. You don't want to get sprayed. Um, and even though these guys do have predators like coyotes, maybe cougars and bobcats and things like that, um, most of the time those predators have learned that skunks uh, have that really nasty smell, so they will typically avoid uh, going after skunks. <laughs> Looks like lavender's ready to go back to bed. Yeah, so speaking of going back to bed, skunks are nocturnal. They are, um, they can be a little crepuscular, which just means um, that they do come out at dawn and dusk. Uh, these guys are awake right now just because they are ambassador animals, so their sleep schedules have changed uh, a little bit to be uh, to fit more with our programs. Um, but in the night, uh, again, these guys are going to be foraging around. They're going to be using their really sharp claws. You can see if Carrie will zoom in, they have curved claws in the front, and that's where they're going to be going to be used to dig for insects. Um, again, these guys are insectivores. That's a main part of their diet. Now, occasionally animals um, will go after skunks, even though they know they're really spray. Um, probably their biggest predator is going to be a great horned owl uh, and occasionally uh, larger eagles because birds of prey don't really have a great sense of smell so unless they get sprayed in the eyes um, being sprayed anywhere else on their body doesn't bother them. Can these guys spray us? These guys cannot spray us. Um, when these guys were a couple weeks old they did have their scent glands removed. Um, that's just to uh, protect you know, the people they're coming out and seeing, but also their educators, because uh, these guys have pretty bad vision. They only see about two to three feet clearly. The rest is pretty blurry, so they're nearsighted. Um, so even if they know their keepers um, from far away, they might take them as like a threat and we don't want them to spray us on accident. Great, so if you guys have any other questions about the skunks, feel free to throw them in the comments here. Hamilton's still looking for some food. Lavender has settled in a little bit. Um, is there anything that they don't like to eat? Hmm. These guys in particular, I haven't really met or found anything they don't like to eat. Again, they um, uh, do like pretty much anything they can get their little paws on. So I guess we'll have to wait and see if they don't like anything. <laughs> they are a true omnivore. open the top. Yeah. So you may be wondering um, sort of about the status of these animals and these guys are of least concern. Um, that just means that their populations are stable so we don't have to worry about these guys going extinct anytime soon. Um, again because they do like to eat a lot of bugs uh, they are um, great at keeping insect populations down for us. 
so we don't have to worry about as many grasshoppers or beetles and things like that. Um, but a big problem with skunks too is that uh, they are big carriers for rabies. Uh, among, they're the second most common rabies vectors, I think behind raccoons. I think 25% of all cases in the US uh, within the past couple years have been skunks. So that's another reason why you want to avoid approaching a skunk, not only from their smell, but you don't want to catch rabies. Uh, we had a question. Are all of their patterns black and white? And what is the deal with the black and white pattern? Not all of their patterns are going to be black and white. Again, there are about 13 different subspecies and their pattern is going to change a little bit, just like how you and I might have different hairstyles and hair color. Um, I think you can find skunks in lighter browns, um, sometimes more black and white than others. As far as why they have those stripes, I'm not totally sure. I don't know if Carrie has the answer to that. Um, oops, sorry, I was reading questions. They're coming in hot and fast. Um, how far can a skunk spray in distance? These guys can spray, I believe, between 15 and 20 feet, so really, really far. Um, and then each of their sprays, remember, they can spray uh, between four and five times before their glands are depleted of um, their really smelly uh, juice. And then it takes about 10 days for them to recharge. And how do they communicate with each other? I would say to, they can make some vocalizations, um, with a, probably a little some grunts and some uh, little squeaks. But for the most part, skunks are pretty solitary. Um, so they're going to avoid other skunks. Now in the winter time, the females may sort of bunch up to, with one another, um, but typically, um, unless they're breeding, skunks are gonna hang out by themselves. Come over here and see if we can get Miss Lavender's face. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> she was sniffing. Yeah, and then in terms of skunk breeding, these guys will typically um, start late winter, early spring, so February into March or so. Um, and then when these guys do breed, it takes about two months um, for gestation. And a female can have between um, two and ten uh, baby skunks in a litter. Typically the average is about seven or eight. Um, they're going to hang out with their mom um, for a couple more months, so about two more months or so before they become pretty mature. Um, and at that point, males are typically going to go off on their own, but the, uh, the females are typically going to stay with the mom for an entire year. So if you've ever seen baby skunks, they're going to follow along in a trail behind the mom. And that's where they're just going to learn how to hunt and to forage and uh, learn just how to be skunks. Thank you, Chris, so much for your donation. It really helps us during this time to continue to bring our conservation education to you all. So thank you for that. All right, I think we got through all the questions. Do you have any last thoughts or things that you want people to know about our friends, the skunks? Mm, I do have a skunk joke. Oh, yes, please. Someone did ask, and I forgot to mention that. Awesome. So I would tell you a skunk joke, but it stinks. <laughs> Perfect. Or how much money does a skunk usually have? One cent. Nice. But um bum um, so we want to thank you guys for joining us. I will say, uh, we'll repeat, these are two of our newer animal ambassadors. So what we're doing right now is actually acclimating them to the animal ambassador space. So eventually when we have the ability to reopen and do encounters, these guys will be able to be out here um, visiting with the public and allowing everyone to get an up close look at this amazing species and learn more about them. And I would say, just looking at their behavior, this is the third time they've been out, outside in this space. They're doing very well, I would say. Uh, they're calm, they're eating, they're sniffing around. We're gonna let them stay out here for a little bit this morning to continue to have some fun, some enrichment. They're probably gonna dig around a little bit once they get more comfortable. Tegan, we miss you too, we miss everybody. We really can't wait for everyone to be able to be back with us. I want to thank Sam for um, introducing us to them again, and we will see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.